Okay, so if you see the Ruritanians come this way, big black flag, okay, skull and crossbones, start yelling, they're the baddies. Come on, you must have eaten one pants, eh? Where are they? Right, here they come, okay, here comes the Ruritanians. Now, they're the bad guys, remember. Big skull and crossbones flag, they've got a tank there, the Ruritanians get their tanks from all sorts of places. Um, you can hear that something great engine in this tank. They've got this tank off the Germans. It's what they call a leopard tank. And it's what the Germans made after World War II when they were allowed to make tanks again. And the Germans decided instead of having a massively heavy tank with lots of armour protection on the front, let's make a fast tank with a really big powerful engine. Because they thought if you stayed around the battlefield, they were better protected against the enemy. Because they won't be able to catch you up to fire at you. So here's the Ruritanian leopard tank coming round now. And you can hear that something great diesel engine in the back there. When the Germans built this tank, um, they actually got a British gun. They asked the British for their 105mm L7 gun. It was the one we had on our Centurion tank. All the older blokes here will remember Dickie's Noise Centurion tank. Well, um, they asked for that gun because it was such a good gun. And they put it on their tank. And uh, lots of countries around the world ended up buying this leopard tank here, including the Ruritanians, as you can see. So, there's the rural changes, they found our mound there. I'm pleased to see we didn't have to raise your ire to um, shout at them. But uh, show them what we think, he's going to take down our flag in a minute. Right, just remember, he's taken down our flag, he's a bad guy, okay, and they've, uh, they've captured the mounds, okay, so they've got their position that they wanted to capture, so what they're doing now is they're positioning their tank so to defend the position. Tanks always have the thickest armour on the front, so you always try and face to where you think you're going to be attacked from, so you're best defended with the thickest armour on the front there. Um, so he's got his position, he's captured it, he's now going to defend it. Now, see if you were paying attention earlier on. Let's just imagine the British Army's got to come and capture this back. What's the first thing they're going to do in a situation like this? What does the Army need to do first of all? No, make a cup of tea, we're talking about the Army, not the RAF, come on. Right, someone paid attention. They'd have to send out their reconnaissance vehicle first of all to find out where the enemy are. Um, they need to know what strength the enemy is before they attack. They need to know where they are and also they need to know what's the best way to send their vehicles forward. Because uh, if we look down the far end of the, the uh, arena, there's our reconnaissance vehicle creeping its way forward, radioing back the information to the main force commander. Uh, the Army has an expression, time spent on reconnaissance is rarely wasted. You need to know all that information first before you send in your main troops. Um, so anything else they can find out, because don't forget, a modern tank, it can weigh well over 60 tonnes. If you just drive up the main street across the bridge, you can collapse the bridge. So they need to find that all out before they set the troops in motion. Um, and that's what that reconnaissance vehicle is radioing back. It also calls in artillery fire as well. He can call that into the Mauritanian position to keep their heads down. So you can call fire down onto the enemy. Now, don't forget, in a real engagement, if he ever got this close, something's gone wrong somewhere, because he's almost uh, bumped into the Ruritania position there. But the important thing for the reconnaissance guys to do is get information back to the main force commander. And uh, he'll be radioing back. Yes, I can see the Ruritanian tank. Actually, we can see the commander. He hasn't been able to shave. He's in a uh, practice morale, and his discipline's not quite as good as uh, we'd like to think they should be. So he's got that message back so that they can now do the main attack. And the other important thing to remember is obviously the British Army is pretty busy at the moment. So they've called up on Bobbington the Sherman tank to put in the attack. So here comes our Sherman tank down the far end of the field. 
um, to place its attack on the Ruritania position, but followed, very importantly, by our armoured personnel carrier that carries the infantry. And uh, again, however many armoured vehicles you've got, however many jets and helicopters in the sky, we still need the infantry to do that final part of the attack and to hold the ground, to capture and to hold the ground. So there's our Sherman coming forward, there's the APC behind it, holding our volunteers. We're retaining the kind of fire back down on the, uh, on the Sherman there. And the APC, if you watch that armoured personnel carrier, they always try and point it to where the enemy are. Because the guys in the back, they could have been bouncing around for the last hour or so in the back of that vehicle. They're going to be very disorientated. If they know that the vehicle is pointing, whoops, firing back at the rear retaining, if they know that armoured personnel carrier is pointing to where the guys have got to attack, they know where they're going, so they're a bit more uh, directed. So here comes our volunteers out the back of the vehicle. Don't forget, these are our volunteers we were training a little bit earlier on this morning. And they're going to put in what the, uh, what the military calls a pepper pot attack. Um, two sections, you can see them lined up there with the section commander, and he's bringing them forward one section at a time in a straight line and then dropping them down. And then the other section moves forward and drops down as well. Now the idea of that is not just because the army likes straight lines for the sake of it, it's for the very practical reason you don't shoot your mate up the backside. Uh, now in the media they call that friendly fire, it's the pretty much the most unfriendly fire going if you're shot by your own side. So if you go forward, they try and keep you parallel. They call it a pepper pot attack. And the important thing is as well, the commanders pointing out where they're attacking, and there they go, whoops, we've lost man. But, oh, look at that, pathetic. Ruritanians are thrown in the towel already. Well done, our volunteers. Well done there. I think we had one man down, but I think he's all right. A bit more fitness training, I think, for one or two of our volunteers. Now, we're going to get them back up on the mound there for you. When they get there, do give them a round of applause. They've been uh, absolutely fantastic.